You said before uh, that um, the I is not, no, the me is not a thought. It's not. It's not a thought. It's not just a thought. No, there can be a thought. Yes. I, I am separate, let's say, or mm. whatever. But that's just, um, that's just information about something that's energetic. I am a thought is a confirmation of separation. It's not separation. Mm. If it was, you could say I'm not separate. Yeah. <laughs> it would be easy, man. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I wouldn't have a job then, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to sweep the bones again. I can't mm. mm. What I see here is more, it's um, something like a belief. It's, uh, it has no substance, but somehow it's a, um, mm, yeah. there's something that goes into the body and into to some sorts or into the seeing and manipulates. Well, yeah, except for me, energetically, mm. there's a sense of feeling. It's, a, it's an energetic sense of separation, and then it's confirmed by thought or belief. Because belief is really only a thought structure. It's only a belief about something, it's really only a thought structure about an idea. Or belief is very superficial. Okay. Again, a confirmation of something much deeper. Mm -hmm. And when you say energetic, um, do you feel the energetic? Well, I mean, you do, I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. but, yeah, me, I don't. Me, me feels energetically constrained. Yeah. Like, the only thing I can remember about Tony Parsons was he felt as though he was bounded by the skin. He was in here. That's all I can remember about that, which never happened. <laughs> but the feeling was, I'm in here. I don't know that, but it was a feeling, not that I'm using words to describe a sense of being only in here and everything else being up there. Definitely. When you talked about the uh, subject and object, <coughs> and then the walls and so, so there is in, the, in this big oneness movement with Amabhadra <coughs> from India. Sorry, the big oneness movement. Yeah, it's a big movement uh, right now called oneness. So well, I don't I think know anything about that. Is it a club? <laughs> <laughs> a little bigger, but um, so the the thing is that. Uh, Bhagavan or Amma Bhagavan, it's a couple. <coughs> but they say that in our brain there is a structure that um, in somehow 
came up to differentiate that I don't walk against the wall and hit this me. And they give diksha on the on dik diksha is a is an energy trans apparently trans yeah. that is a Buddhist to um, to open that yeah. to to and that that's what they call it, oneness movement because they oh, want that they want good. yeah they want yeah. people you know that and then yeah. yeah so please uh, you know it's a very funny thing but there's a word arising here <laughs> in, in <the> <laughs> it's just that whole thing is based on the misconception that there is someone who can transfer this to someone else. Yes. Like it's an energy that can be transferred. Yes. There isn't anyone that can transfer it and there isn't anyone that can receive it. It's based on a complete misconception. But some yeah, freedom, what is, is all there is. If it's all there is, how can it be transferred from one to another? It's just your back in the wheel. I can turn your brain functioning so that you become all one. <laughs> it's just bullshit. <laughs> yes. And it's based on the misconception. Who is it? Who is it that can do that? And who is it that perceives it? But somehow, here is an atmosphere, I feel. Yeah, that's all right. I know there's an atmosphere. Which is <laughs> <laughs> different. But it always is an atmosphere. I mean, you go to the ocean, gorgeous, I love the ocean, it's a gorgeous guy. You go to his meditation room and there's an atmosphere. It's all to do with a, 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 um, a sort of introspective energy or an energy that, that is emotionally charged. And we, and me, thinks it's something to do with uh, spirituality or you know, you know, enlightenment. It's emotion. The emotion of belief and the emotion of transformation. Freedom can't be given because it is already all there is. So there's a difference just right now here, hearing you or sitting in a pub and drinking beer. Um, is there a difference? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Is is there a difference sitting in a pub and have a beer or listening to No, none at all. No difference? No. Of course not. How can there be? Mm -hmm. There is nothing apart. Just do what I think there's only the one. What they say, uh, the bee is fighting for its survival. Is this apparently? Oh, I mean apparently. Apparently. It was never there. So the uh, bee is not, so bee is not really there. Oh, no, it's not there. No, there's nothing to fight for. Mm. But in the dream, the story of me, mm. and me seems to be there and to fight for its survival. And, and me creates all sorts of games to maintain its, it's, 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 it's apparent, yes, it's being a victim, yeah. being arrogant, being confused, being wise, being this. Yes, it's a good and very subtle, subtle ways as well. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask about the um, perception of the body, physical body. When this, uh, like I feel like uh, there's no real consistency. There's no consistency. Consist no consistency oh. in this body is like, no. like uh, a cloud of energy of particles struck down signal. But this is what's so apparent to me. Yeah, everything is only apparent. Oh, it's only apparent to me. Yeah. Everything is only apparent. So there's nothing left really. No, there's nothing left.
intellectual idea is a pretty crazy idea that you don't experience yourself to sit in the chair. Yeah, well this is crazy. Yeah. This is mad. Yeah. But, you know, in relationship to the old, what we call the normal world of me. Yeah, to my experience it's like, is how can you be sitting in a chair and not... Oh no, absolutely. And not experience yourself in a chair. That's like, how me maintains it. Yeah. So that's why it's impossible for me to become enlightened. It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous because me is always in that apart world. So what what's going on here is is that that's being illuminated here by us talking about it. And that, but that's a fairly superficial thing that's going on. And something else that's energetic. And um, that, that sense of being separate, that energy of being that contracted energy of being separate and wanting to know everything in control can suddenly shine. But there's nothing that can be done about that. It may or may not happen. Mm -hmm. But the other awful thing about it is that when it does happen, <coughs> there will be a recognition that it never did happen. Because nothing happened. So this is a real <laughs> double-edged paradox. Thank 
Sorry? Sorry. Um, I have a question um, about this before after thing. Um, when you talk about an energetic, energetic shift, I get the feeling that one day it will happen. Yeah, that's the but problem. At the yeah. same time, you say it's all there is. Yeah, there, because there is no before or after, and nothing happens. The problem for me is that it lives in a world of what will happen next. So when it hears this, then it thinks, oh, well, it'll happen one day, it won't ever happen. It doesn't happen. There's no before, there's no after, there's no inner, and there's no outer. But then, um, can it be missed? Can it be missed? Can you miss it? No, it can't be missed because it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but it's constantly rejected by the energy of me. Yeah. It can only be constantly rejected. What is can only be constantly rejected by me because me lives in an artificial world which is finite. It's in an artificial reality that is dreamt of. The yeah. dreams uh, uh, of it and is in an artificial world. Does there need to be a recognition then? No, well, there doesn't need to be anything because nothing happens. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing needs to happen because as I said to our friend Vidisha, you know, there is no need for anything because freedom is all there is already. So how could there be a transference of freedom from one person to another when already all there is is a freedom? Tony, you, you mentioned this watching yourself, yeah. to watch yourself. Can it be that the more you watch yourself, the heavier it becomes? Sorry, can it be? <laughs> that the more you watch yourself, the heavier it becomes? It can, uh, yes, they can, that can have, although basically really, uh, for the, experience, the memory here of the observer was that there was nothing I could do about that. I think that um, in self-inquiry and those sort of things, 
they can become, or there seems to be the possibility, uh, although nobody does it, of concentrating more and more on what I call focused awareness. And that can become very heavy, but that's a, pro that's a process that apparently the seeker can invest in, of course, if they can't. So, but for me, the sense of my, mem my memory of Tony Parsons having an observer wasn't, wasn't in any way heavy in that sense, because there wasn't any idea that I could do anything about that. It wasn't quite the same, you know, the observer, the thing that watches you stand there or sit there is not the same as what I call focused awareness, which is a process for me. It's an exercise me can apparently carry out. But as you watch yourself, you become defined, right? And the more you watch, you become more defined. And then the problem, I mean, you... Oh, no, you know, that's not the same thing as what I'm doing. Okay. I think you're more and more to regard awareness. Well, if I watch myself, if I watch every movement, every thought, blah, 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 I become more defined, right? Yeah, that, that's... And that's problem. shit, because the more defined I become, the more... Um, so it's self-glorification. It's absolutely self glorification self inquiry is about self glorification so it's about emotion actually, self-consciousness. But I never did that as a teaching, somebody told me that's good, I just did it and yeah. no one told me like self inquiry you're going to get to heaven. No, no. I, I noticed that I do it and, and it's not any fun actually. No, no. But there are a lot of people out there selling it as well. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Why does the bee invest so much in itself while it's going to die anyway? Why does the bee invest so, so much in itself and it's going to die anyway? Well, it doesn't think it's going to die. It is, its investment in itself is about survival. The, the, the energy puts into it its own glorification, whatever that is, it's only about survival. It doesn't believe it's ever going to
strangely in the end, the seeker, the me seeker, doesn't even know what it's seeking. It has no idea. It's got a, I mean, like when Tony Parsons was around it, Tony Parsons had a very definite idea about what enlightenment was about. It was certainly about being totally adored by all women. <laughs> <laughs> And some men that was sort of on the side, really. And being glorified and having lots of fast cars. Oh. <laughs> and money. <coughs> so, you know, the teacher has an idea of what they think enlightenment is like, but it's a sort of personal enlightenment they think they would like. But no idea what is really if they knew what was long for, they, they'd run as fast as they could, which is what they do anyway. <laughs> what do you say then, that, that you're, you're a kind of freak of nature? Oh! When you say, well, you think about this. Yes. No, you're a freak of nature. <laughs> it's oh, dead. It's dead. Oh, yeah, of course not, but I'm happy. You, you, live in a, you live in a schizophrenic world. Yes. The me lives in a schizophrenic, unnatural reality. And there were so many. There are a lot of you, I've noticed. <laughs> there aren't any of you, And everything around you is in the natural reality. Trees, everything. And animals. Animals don't have any sense of separation. They might answer a name or get used to eating dirt for some da da da. And then for some people they almost seem as though they're human. But actually they might seem like that, but there's absolutely no sense of separation. They are all free. They are all simply being. Everything is simply being except than me. Hence the recent discovery by neuroscientists that the whole structure of individuality is illusory. Is what? Illusory. What isn't? Well, well, in a sense, well, I think for me, for me, the only illusion there really is is the illusion of me that it thinks it's real. Okay. Everything else is. You can't say the wall is illusory in a way because it is and it isn't. You know, in a way, it's really and done in that sense. But the one for practical purposes, you don't try to go through it. <laughs> no. Here it seems that um, when there's less 
fast thinking when the thinking is a little bit slower and it's it's more se seen or it's more being or I don't know. Uh, as if if the thinking is very strong and fast, then it's illusion is stronger. Is it so? No, no, not at all, in one way. A feeding, a thought can feed the story of me and not. There's nothing wrong with thought. But all the time it can get hold of an energy called me, then it can talk to me and me can talk to it. So there's a sort of, the thought arises and can attach to the me energy, which is a very sticky energy. It's continually gathering everything into itself. This is only a cloud, this is only a story. But the thought arises and attaches itself to me, and then there's a circle of energy where, I mean, you, have you ever had that feeling that the same thought keeps on coming back like a CD? So that's the me feeding the thought, and the thought feeds me. So when the sticky me suddenly is no more, the thought arises out of that and can't find anything to talk to. So it gets bored step and goes back to nothing. There's no there's nothing it can hold on to. It might come up a jail, but it can't find anything to stick to. But so apart from what I'm trying to say there's nothing wrong with thought. It's just, you know, like everything else, it's an appearance out of no thing. For all the time there's a me there, it changes seem or appear to be the story of me. Uh, here it seems that um, when there's so many thoughts and when it's so fast running, like in everyday life sometimes, or most of the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> then, uh, that, then it's not at all that a, a thought comes and then falls back or so. But when it's slower, then, then it seems like what you said. Well, thought comes and falls. Away. But everything comes out of nothing, of course. So everything returns to nothing. In, in our sense, it returns like a story, but energetically, thought is nothing thinking. Um, but slower thought or faster thought is just what's happening. There isn't anything that can be done about that. The idea that you, you know, that meditation can slow thought down is just another part of the story. Do 
you're on the mic. between the me and what the brain is Oh, the brain doing. is just a computer when the brain is nothing computing. And is the me not nothing mean? Right. Of course the me is nothing meaning as well. And both are appearances. Of course everything is only an appearance. And there's no me. The brain goes on functioning and computing like it did before. When there's a me, it goes on training and computing just as it did before. But me claims that every choice or everything that happens comes out of me. That's all. Mm -hmm. When there's no me, there's just response and so on to apparent life, apparent life, apparently yeah. happening. But there's no one in there that that's happening to anymore. But, you know, you don't have to work this out. You can't work this out. But there's no answer. There just is no answer. Because there is no answer. So, why are we sitting here? Well, you may be sitting there because you think you're going to get something. Mm -hmm. And it now may be doing being realised that you're not going to get anything. <laughs> you know, the me comes here to get something. Mm -hmm. It's possible that when that walks out of the room, there won't be a me, or you know, at least there'll be a recognition that me ain't going to get nothing. Because there ain't nothing to get. <laughs> this is, you know, somewhere what's going on in this room, there's a resonance with what's going on in this room. It's not me. But there's something else that's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs>